Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we've got a big frickin' package to unbox. This right here is really exciting because inside of this box is another Compact computer, specifically a Compact Desk Pro 286. Now the Compact Desk Pro was essentially Compact's desktop version of the Compact Portable. Oh yeah, remember that? We'll hopefully do a part two on that before the millennium is over. But anyways, the Compact Desk Pro was released shortly after the Compact Portable 1 was introduced. And this right here comes to me as a viewer donation from Stephanie, who I'd like to thank very much for sending this to me. This is going to be a really awesome computer to just dive into and explore in this video and perhaps in some future videos if this thing doesn't work because Stephanie was not able to test this so we don't know if it works or not and I'm going into this blind and we're going to just open up the box and we'll see what's inside and we'll see if it powers on oh boy there it is so yeah this thing was packaged uh, extremely well uh, she actually included a blanket here to wrap the keyboard which if you saw my compact portable video the design of all this stuff will look very very similar uh, you've got that same glorious compact logo up here uh, this keyboard looks to be in very very good shape um, let's go flip it around to the back here so this is uh, just model enhanced keyboard and yeah it is a little bit yellowed we might have to do some retro brighting on this and the computer does look a little bit yellowed as well but that's just to be expected. I mean, this thing's from 1985, and uh, yeah, yellowing is just going to happen. Uh, so we've got some, uh, looks like a thing of screws here as well, which I presume go to the case, or at least somewhere in the case, perhaps for some of the expansion cards. Uh, right here, I think this is, is this the hard drive? This might be the hard drive. Uh, let's see, yep, we'll have to, to plug this in and see if it works. It looks like this is, is this a Seagate drive? I think it is. Yep, there it is on the bottom. You got the Seagate sticker. I think I saw a note somewhere that I just wanna make sure I don't miss. Maybe it was this I saw when I was opening the box. I thought I saw a uh, note because I definitely wanna make sure I don't lose that. Uh, here's another screw that I guess might have come out of this bag or no this bag is sealed So I guess I'm just gonna put it in there just so we don't lose it But we have right here uh, read this first the inf this information supersedes portions of the information inside the compact Pro 286 operations guide Yeah, it's a list of some additional things that you uh, you could have opted to to get with this computer All right, so I've adjusted the camera angle so you can see the front of the computer a lot better and the first thing I'm noticing comparing this to the Compact Portable 1 is that the Desk Pro 286 here, this front piece is the only plastic piece, of course with the exception of the keyboard back here because it's entirely made out of plastic, at least the, the outer casing is. Uh, but the rest of the computer here, this entire piece here is made of metal, which is great because it's not going to yellow. So when I go to retrobrite this thing, I'm only going to have to remove this front piece as opposed to the Compact Portable 1, where if you saw that video, it was a pretty involving process getting that thing retro brighted. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, turn it around here and listen to this wonderful squeaking sound from the feet on the bottom. And it looks like one of the feet actually fell off here. So it does look like there are some screws missing. I assume that's, I was probably right about this. These are going to be chassis screws because uh, we've got one missing here and you can see it's actually starting to flex a little bit. So we'll have to screw that back in. We've got one up here missing, one up here missing. So you've got eight expansion slots, uh, two of them, potentially three, because I noticed this one here uh, is, is a lot yellower than the other blanks here. In fact, I don't think that is a blank. So this might be a memory expansion card. Uh, just, of course, there's nothing on the back. So this right here looks like your video. This right here looks like you've got serial uh, connector there. This thing predates VGA. Of course, VGA was introduced in 1987. This is, again, from 85, so we don't have a, a VGA card on here. And this right here, speaking of monitors, uh, this is the monitor power interface because I believe that the monitor that came with this thing got power directly from the computer, so you didn't have to plug it directly into the wall. But let's go ahead and see if we can take this thing off uh, so you've got two or actually three screw holes that are labeled cover release so you've got this one which is already removed there's this one here which is I might be able to know that's still kind of tight in there my lovely iFixit kit has to make another appearance again which is uh, pretty typical for this channel as you can imagine not a sponsor of course but uh, hey iFixit I know I've said this before but if you ever want to sponsor that's the wrong screw but what is this 
Uh, oh, that's a star bit, gosh, or a, a Torx something. That's actually interesting, uh, because I would think that... Oh, no, well, I guess you could use a flathead, because it's got... Yeah, it's... Or I wonder if this... Maybe this was the wrong screw. I kind of find it surprising that they're using a, a star bit on the exterior of the machine here. But it does look like you could use a, uh, a flathead, because I would think you would want this thing to be... Um, yeah, you could definitely use a... Uh, flathead with that. Yeah, I would think you would definitely want to make this thing to where the user could open it to install expansion slots. I mean, that's why these <laughs> that's why these slots are here. So, uh, I might need to just get a smaller flathead, but you're going through like 10 bits just to get this thing off. Yeah, so you can totally use a flathead uh, with this, which is wonderful. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and pull this back. I think those are the only three screws for releasing it. Maybe. There we go, it's coming off. So I think it just, does it have to slide all the way to the front? I think it does. So there it is, and we've got this empty bay cover that's on its way out there. We'll have to secure that back to where it's supposed to go. And just a quick note here, I always like trying to find date codes and stuff on these older computers, and there is one in the chassis cover here so you see there's that label park view and i can't make out the date there it looks like december something i can see like 1980 of course the most important digit of that <laughs> is missing you also have the you can see the inside of the lock here there is a keyhole um, on the front of the thing and that controls this right here when you move it unfortunately the key is not uh, in here i assume that was lost at some point so luckily it is in the unlocked position so we could i mean obviously see that you can see we got the thing off so it's definitely in the unlocked position and taking a look at what we've got in here uh so this right here is the floppy drive it's got of course a five and a quarter inch floppy drive underneath here i think this is another blank um because i'm looking behind here and i can't see anything through this hole so this is another blank back here we've got the power supply and right here we have our expansion cards though i think the first thing i'm going to do is secure all of this back together because you know there's a screw missing here there's a screw missing here which has been causing this metal panel to flex that's a lot better so we've got all of that secured back properly and let's go ahead and take a brief look at the expansion cards so i think i'm just going to take these expansion cards out so that i can show you what they are and we can get a little bit of a better look at them we'll first remove the nice cover here which is, uh, it's definitely nice to still see this thing in here. So it is a little bit cracked, but it's still intact. So that's good. And we'll start with the, uh, this one was installed by Compaq. This is a Compaq card. You can see, uh, we probably can't really see it super well, but it says 1995 Compaq Computer Corporation. This is the combination floppy printer and serial card. Uh, you do have connectors on the interior or on the inside of the computer here on the card. And that's in fact what this connector right here goes to. It has been unplugged, so we'll have to plug that back in. So there it is. I'm guessing this is the first revision because uh, you see REV there. There's no number next to it. You do have some marker on here, some Sharpie VC. I just like looking at this stuff. I find it pretty fascinating. I don't know how interesting it is to everybody uh, <laughs> that's out there. But uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool to see all these markings and stuff on it and try to determine what they mean. Now, this one I'm starting to second guess. This is the one with no ports on the back. I, I thought this was a memory card, but I'm looking at it and I don't really see any memory modules. All right, so it turns out this is not a memory expansion card. This is actually actually a hard disk controller card for that Seagate hard drive. Uh, so you have to plug the hard drive into here. Uh, this was manufactured by Data Technology Corporation. That's the, uh, the company name on the bottom there. You've got the part number, which I looked up to verify what this was. And yeah, so there it is. We'll have to, I actually don't know if I've got the cables for the hard drive, so we may not be able to hook this thing up. Let me look at the hard drive here. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got any of these cables for this thing, which sucks. Um, I'll have to definitely try and then source that uh, if I cannot find anything in my wonderful bin of cables that will, that will work with this. But yeah, so there's that. And the last card here 
is the, uh, which one is this? Oh yeah, the display card, that's right. Uh, it's made in Canada, and this is an ATI card. So, yeah, let's see if there's a, a date stamp on here. I'd be kind of curious to... Oh, there it is. Copyright 1987. And yeah, so there you go. We'll set that aside here, and I'll give you a glimpse at the motherboard. So there it is. There's all your ISA slots. You've got your memory over there. You've got a lot of room for memory expansion. And right here is the one floppy drive, which we will have to wire up to that floppy controller. You got the power supply here. Uh, very, very short cable that runs to the motherboard uh, compared to what we saw in the compact portable. All right, there was definitely some dust in there, but not a whole lot. I mean, this thing is in really, really nice shape, uh, and I hope that it still works. I think that recapping this thing would, I mean, not, not I think, I know that recapping this thing would definitely be a... Uh, good idea. Hopefully we won't have another um, bad tantalum capacitor on the motherboard like we had with the compact portable. I mean, I'm not seeing like any physical damage at all. Really, the only thing is uh, the fact that the front plastic piece and the plastic pieces on the keyboard here are yellowed and probably should be retrovited. But even the keys here, I mean, the keys do not look yellowed at all. Yeah, and speaking of the keyboard, while I've got this thing uh, here, let me just set the, the computer. We'll push it aside a little bit here. I'm sure you've noticed this by now, but the keyboard is modular. There's no permanent cable attached to the top of it here. So there is this connector. Of course, the downside to that is if you lose the cable, you'll have to find a replacement. And there's no cable in this package uh, so I assume that Stephanie did not have it which is fine because it turns out because I, I was looking at this connector and I'm like this looks familiar this looks like the connector on the IBM Model M so I go to my Model M and sure enough the cable for it plugs into this thing just fine so I can use, at least in theory, I should be able to use this cable with this computer. Now, of course, the Model M here uses the PS2 connector, and there's no PS2 connector on this computer because it predates the thing. But there is an AT connector on the front, and I've got an AT to PS2 adapter that we can use. And uh, yeah, we should be able to see if this keyboard works. So what I'm going to do is uh, install all these cards back in their respective place. And we're going to put this, I guess, put the cover back on, or maybe I'll leave the cover off and we're trying to power it on, but I'll hook this thing up to a monitor and we'll see if it works, which would be really freaking awesome if it does. <laughs> All right, so good news regarding the hard drive. It turns out I don't have cables that can connect this thing to the controller card, but what I do have is the hard drive and the controller card from the Compact Portable 1, which is one of these units that combines both the hard drive and the controller card onto one card that you can fit into an ISA slot, which is really nice. <laughs> The only thing that I just realized is these cables are not nearly long enough <laughs> to connect because the drive has to go in here and the controller card is like all the way over here. So there's no way that that's going to reach. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is just leave the top off here. Of course, we still don't even know if the thing works. I'm kind of assuming that it does at this point, uh, but if it doesn't, then all this is going to really be for nothing. Although I guess it won't really be for nothing. I mean, at least we we tried to, to get the hard drive working, but I'm going to definitely have to get longer cables for this thing. So we'll plug uh, this one right into here. And we'll get the other one here. And the Molex connector is in here. We do have that, that we can connect to the drive's Molex connector here. I think I'm just going to set the drive like that. And I think we'll be able to reach the connectors on the controller card. Well, we've got a... Oh boy. Oh boy. So yeah, the power supply came on, the hard drive is definitely on.
All right, so I went ahead and hooked up the video signal to this Symphonic CRT here. It did a memory check. It looks like it found the hard disk, uh, though it says system options not set, run setup, insert diagnostic diskette in drive A, which we don't have. Although we can just hit F1 to resume. Date and time not set. So is there anything on this drive that's going to actually try to boot from? Because the other thing I just realized is I don't have... I don't have any, uh, oh no, non-system disk or disk error, replace and strike any key when ready. You know, now that I think about it, Stephanie did mention that she was going to, I think, recover the data on this drive and then format it, which would make sense. You know, I highly recommend everybody do that before you, you send computers to people or donate them or put them in a landfill or, or whatever, or just physically destroy the drive if it has sensitive data. So, yeah, there's nothing on this drive. At least there's no operating system on it anyways because it can't boot from it. And I just I just realized that I don't have any five and a quarter inch diskettes of MS-DOS or any other operating system that we could install on this thing. Well, we know that the keyboard works because, you know, I'm, I'm pressing a key and it is responding with that beep saying that, uh, I didn't actually replace the disc or put any bootable medium in the uh, floppy drive. And yeah, I don't have, um, and yeah, the, the floppy drive, I, I know you guys can't see this, but the floppy drive is actually like when I hit a key here, it does attempt to read from it because the light comes on here. Well, I gotta say, I am incredibly excited about this computer, and I, I want to thank Stephanie once again. This is this is gonna make for some really awesome future videos because, you know, I've been wanting to get an 80s era desktop computer to use for videos on this channel because, you know, normally when we install older operating systems, I always use the 98 PC, which is not you know, period specific for installing operating systems from the late 80s and early 90s. This thing right here uh, would be great for, you know, installing Windows 2.0 or even 3.0 on it and uh, just, you know, having it as an older Windows machine or just even MS-DOS and just having that on here. That would come in handy for some future videos, definitely. But, you know, there are a few things that I have to do. I need to, first of all, purchase uh, longer cables for the hard drive so that I could connect this uh, and actually, you know, install the hard drive properly instead of the finagled thing that I have now. I need to get uh, a monitor for this thing. I, I Preferably, if I could track down, like, an original uh, Compact Desk Pro 286 monitor that went with this thing, that would be awesome, but uh, I'm sure those are going to be pretty hard to find. But I, I will uh, keep looking out for it. You know, you, you never know if, I, if I'll come across one at a thrift store or a garage sale or even something that, that could work with this. Because I would definitely like to complete the setup and use a period-appropriate monitor. Uh, and I do need to get a either a 3.5-inch hard drive that I could install in this thing or get a five and a quarter inch hard drive for my computer, which I really should have just done like 10 years ago. Um, because yeah, I, I need to, to use that to make some, some, you know, boot discs and, and stuff like that, or try and track down a, a physical copy of MS-DOS on five and a quarter inch diskettes. So I guess we got to come up with a name for this thing. I don't know. I guess we could just call it the, the Compact Desk Pro 286 or the viewer donation Compact Desk Pro 286 from Stephanie or Stephanie's 286, maybe something like that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. There you have it, guys. That is uh, a video on Stephanie's very generous donation to the channel. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you very much. And thank you to all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, uh, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.